Guys, thanks for joining today. We are at Essential Watches again. We're going to meet with Seth. I called him earlier and asked him to get out some watches which are going to be for investment purposes. Not for me, but for you. We're going to try and teach you what's a good buy, what's a bad buy, uh, where you should put your money, what the anticipated result will be over a few years. He should have some watches out for us to see. Let's go have a look. Thank you. Hey, Seth. Hi. How are you? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. I see you're prepared. I am prepared. So I was, I was just explaining, um, you're going to tell us about uh, investment watches and what's a good buy, what's a bad buy, what could potentially be a disaster. And uh, I, I see these are the watches we're going to be talking about. Yeah, these are some of the watches I've pulled out. In general, right now it's February 2019. In general, the hottest watches on the market are Paddock Philippe Nautiluses, Aquanauts, Audemars Piguet Royal Oaks, Richard Mill, and basically all Rolex sport models. These are the hot four categories. Okay, so without having to spend fortunes of money, because the names you just mentioned are big dollars, right? What would be like an entry level cost? What can somebody get for a little amount of money that they can enjoy without losing money in the future? Okay, good question. So the number one most popular watch that Rolex has ever produced is the Submariner. So you're saying go with the Rolex, basically? Definitely. Okay. So a basic stainless steel Submariner has done nothing but go up in value over the years. So how, how old is this particular one we're looking at? This watch is probably 20 years old. Okay, so 20 years ago, I know you won't know the exact price, but approximately how much was this watch 20 years ago? $3,500. Really? Yeah. And how much is it today? $6,500. Stop it, really? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So that is a great, that's a great buy. I mean, that's a great buy. So in your professional opinion, it's still like new, it's amazing. In your professional opinion, if somebody, somebody was to buy this today for 6,500 bucks and 10 years along the line, what's it gonna be worth? I know nobody knows, but. I mean, my best guess, if you bought a watch for 65 right now, I'd say in 10 years, the watch is gonna be trading at 8,000, 8,500. Really? Yeah. So you're just gonna continue to go up? Yeah. So guys, so lesson number one, this is a great buy, right? I don't have one of these, I have a white gold one. That's got some sparkly stuff on it, but I don't think that's going up in money. Yeah, this one has no diamonds, but all sport model Rolexes over the years have been the watches that have held their value the best. And I, I know I'm, I'm not an absolute expert on these watches, but it looks the same or very similar to a current model. There's not a whole lot of change to it. Yeah, right? the, the only difference is the current models, the, the dial is a maxi dial, so you can see the print and they see the dots better, and also the bezel is now ceramic. But other than that? Well, it's got an upgraded movement, the bracelet's better, high, higher end bracelet, but basically the watch looks the same. So if somebody's sat in a bar and they have this on their wrist and there's somebody four seats down that's wearing a brand new one, you couldn't really tell the difference. It'd be hard to tell the difference. And you don't have to spend 6500 on a sub, you could actually, for less, get a date just. That's a pretty looking watch too. Yeah. I had one of these back in the day as well. So these you can pick up starting at $4,000. Really? Yeah. And how much was this when it was new? When it was new, it probably was about the same price. Really? Brand spanking new, out the shop, $4,000. Uh, 15, 20 years ago. Really? And now as a used watch, 20 years old, it's still worth exactly what you would have paid if you bought it for full stick. That's like art, right? It's hanging on the wall, you enjoy it, and it's still worth what you paid for, it, or it went up. Right, And so, but this is an example of a watch that hasn't really spiked, right. but absolutely held its value 100%. If you had bought other watches, for example, Daytona's 10, 15 years ago, this watch was, 10,000. New. No, used. These were 10,000 about eight, 10 years ago. Okay. Used. Okay. I will buy this watch all day long for twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000. And then sell it for and, more. And obviously. that's what I would pay for it. So these so, have absolutely gone up in price. So what was this watch brand new in a Rolex store 10 years ago? Okay, so Rolex Daytonas were, I think, 9,000 retail 10, 15 years ago. And so they've always been worth more than the retail price. Right, if you could buy them brand new, they were more, but I'm just talking about uh, as a used watch, it was worth exactly what the retail price was new. Imagine that, yeah. having something used that's worth exactly what it is brand new. Now, 
that's going to throw some people out. People will say, well, why don't you go buy a new one? I don't think you can, right? You yeah. just can't go into Rolex and buy this right. watch. That's the trick. They, right. they, they, never, they, they never have them. They're always sold out of Daytonas. So that's why they're worth more than the Rivera. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, there's a huge collection. So there's other models. For example, this is a Rolex Hulk. This is another example of a watch that you really can't buy at a dealership. You can go there, you can talk to the salespeople, they'll tell you that they might be able to get you one eventually on a, on a list, but you're never gonna get it. This so watch, this is very current, right? Yeah, it's a current model. They've been making it for five years, and this watch is trading at something like $4,000 over retail price. Really, what is the retail price of this? 9,000. So if you can buy this for 10 or 11,000, you've hit a home run. Yeah, you're buying it right. You, you really can't find them that cheap. They're usually they're about 13,000. Will it continue to go up? I believe so. I really do. I don't see anything that's going to bring this market watch, down. Huh? That's a really nice looking watch. Okay, so I'm learning here. Yeah. Hopefully we're all learning. More examples. Lots of Rolexes here. These are Rolexes. Yeah, Rolexes. I pull out a bunch of Rolex, but we can okay. talk about other things. But this is another example of a watch that was discontinued soon after it was made. This is the 41 millimeter day date in rose gold. Why was it discontinued? Rolex, from what I understand, believed that they would actually do better making a 40 millimeter day date as opposed to the 41. It was a little too big. So, so they reduced it by one millimeter? One millimeter, that's it. That's insane, right? Yeah. Okay, so how much is this guy? So now because they discontinued these after two years, now it's the hot watch. This is what everybody wants because you can't get it. So Rolex did it deliberately knowing what would happen, right? <laughs> I don't know if they did deliberately, but... So how much is this? 30,000. What was it new? Used. Uh, brand new, I think it retailed for, I want to say 35 to 40. Brand so this new. is lost a little bit of money. It, if you compare it to one of these, it's gone up. It, this is actually it, It's lost. only lost if you are assuming that you paid full retail price for it. So going back four or five years ago, you could get usually 15 to 20% off on these buying them okay, brand new. Okay, that makes sense. So again, it, the watch is worth a little bit more as a pre-owned watch than what you would have had to buy it for back in the day, brand new. So let's put these watches all together like this and let's imagine that somebody watching this right now, we haven't talked about that one yet, so somebody watching this right now can afford any one of these watches. So it's not about the money. Which one would you recommend they buy? Well, if they want something with glitz and they want to actually show off that they're a money guy, I would definitely go with the rose gold. If you just want to basically be a little bit more nonchalant and have a watch that you know absolutely will not lose a penny over time, you go with the stainless steel Submariner all day long. That's good advice. Okay, so this watch, going back to the, the, the gold one, what do you think will happen to the value in five years? Will it stay where it is? Will it go down? Will it go up? What do you think I, I will happen? See, I see this watch going up in price like three to five percent a year, steadily. I don't see really? it, yeah, I don't see it stopping. This is a good investment. Okay, so what are these guys over here? So these are, um, forget this one, but these are entry level Rolexes. So this is basically, if you wanted to get into a Rolex for $1,500, this is a ladies size for $1,500, and this is a larger size that a man could wear for $2,500. That's an inexpensive entry level watch. That I'm assuming will never ever lose value, right? It's never going to be less than 2500 bucks. Never. But it might go up. Never. For, for sure it'll go up slowly over time. Okay, I'm grabbing this one. So here's a gold Daytona. So with a little red insert that matches my outfit today. Everything that I have has a little red insert on it. I should buy it. <laughs> so this is a hold on, hold on. Let me interrupt here. Uh, red. I was black, just about to say. Red, I'm like, black. what? What red watch has he worn to match that? Matching shoes, Jacob. One of my favorite brands. You don't have any Jacobs. I don't. I don't specialize in Jacob. They're hard to get. I know they're selling for, some of them are selling for double ticket. Yeah. They can't be that hard to get because he's got all of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're hard to get because I've got them all. <laughs> Look at the shoes. They have red stripes. Everything has a red striped shirt, which I'm, I think I'm too big for. I don't know what's happening. So Mike, this is another good example of an excellent investment piece. So pre-owned five years ago, you could pick these up for 18, 19,000. And how much is it today? Now this watch is twenty-four to twenty-five thousand. Really? Pre-owned. Yeah, this, that's insane. Yeah, these have done nothing but go up. Now, is that because it has the little red insert, or is that just in general? All gold Daytonas have gone up. 
about 20 30 percent what's the list price well what was the list price I, I believe this is a $35,000 retail price so somebody that bought this brand new would still be behind if they paid full retail right it, but it, you're saying back then you could get yeah. a discount usually I say 95 times out of a hundred when you pay full retail for a watch and then wear it enjoy it and then try to trade it later as a used watch, you are going to be taking a loss. Unless it's one of these. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> good. Richard Mill. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Excellent example. That is a good looking watch. That's a great looking watch. So, may I talk about this watch? Because I, I, I have a few Richard Mills, as you know, and I, you know, I don't like the brand. They don't treat you well. It's not a great fun buying experience. I mean, they're, they're horrible. I'm just being honest. Really? I, I'm, being, oh. I'm being honest. They're, they're doing you a favor by selling your watch. Huh. However, their marketing has been incredible and the demand for these watches is insane. So much so, uh, I don't know about the titanium watch. I don't have a titanium one, but the gold ones that I have, they are selling for 100,000 over stickers, some of them. I just insane. You can't buy these watches. You just can't get them. And how much is this one worth? I think this is about 120 or 100 more. No, no, list. Oh, retail, right. Re retail price. You can't go into Richard Mille and buy this watch. Right. You can't go to any store anywhere and buy this watch brand new for sticker. Yeah. Uh, how much is it? Well, as a pre owned watch, it's going for forty to $50,000 over sticker. And that's a, that's a titanium one, which is the lowest end of, of these watches. Okay. So. We have this on the website for 168,000, I'm pretty sure, something like that. Yeah, that's 50 grand over sticker. So that's crazy. Yeah. But again, that's marketing. Um, and, and I keep asking myself, people want to buy my Richard Meals from me, and they're offering me crazy money, way more than I paid. Do I sell? Do I not sell? Are they going to continue to go up? There has to be a point where these watches come down. There has to be, because it's all based on marketing. And I think, you know, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all these different places has hyped these watches up to such an extent. So I don't know, um, I'm very tempted to sell some just for the sake of it, but at the same time, I enjoy but them. You make a good point about Instagram, because actually I believe that Instagram is the culprit in why certain watches have become as hot as they have. For example, the Paddock Nautiluses were never hot. You until couldn't about, give those watches away, right? about four or five years ago, yeah. and then every guy that's a, that's a player has got a gold Nautilus 5980. And what now, do they look like? Do you have any? Uh, I actually only have one Nautilus in the entire store right now. We're completely sold out. I have one right here. This is the 5712 in white gold. So the 5980 has one subdial in the center, right, which so is a chrono, it's a chrono right? exactly. And it has two additional buttons on the side. And I think the case is slightly bigger. So three years ago, three years ago, I'd be hard pressed to get 35,000 for this watch as a That's used watch. Difficult sell, right? Very difficult sell. And today? I wouldn't sell this for a penny less than 50,000 right now. Really? Yeah. So these have done very There's well. There's a well. massive demand for these yeah. watches. Again, we're talking about used watches, not just brand new. This is a pre-owned watch. All right, well, we can also talk about brands that are losing value. Let's do that. Big time. All right, so one of the brands that actually, when they first came out, that were very hot, very well received in the market, hard to get, is Graham. British. Yeah. They were making very cool watches. They're great watches. And they, they just made, they made too many of them. A lot of them came into the market as closeouts, and now these are literally selling brand new for minimum, minimum 50% off. Really? Yeah. What is the price of one of these? That retails for 8,000. So you're selling this for 4,000? I'm actually, this is a, technically a pre-owned piece. I'm selling for $2,500. Really? Yeah. That is a great looking watch for $2,500. It's got some nice weight to it too, Phil. Yeah, I like that. So when, so when people say, ah, Graham doesn't hold its value, it's all relative. It all depends upon what you actually pull the trigger at. If you can buy the watch right out the gate, you're protected. But if you go pay full retail price, you're going to get murdered. It's upside down. <laughs> it's upside down. Great watch. I love this watch. So let's talk about that. So let's say you buy this for $2,500. It can't really lose anymore, can it? No, you're already at the bottom. Exactly right. Can it go up? No. But you're safe. To be honest with you, I don't think it's going to go up in value. But you're safe at $2,500. Yeah, exactly right. There. That's how you want to buy a watch like that. That's good to know. And what did you say the retail was on those? 8000 Okay. This one looks brand new. 
Do you have any watches that sold for silly money originally that are now worth pocket change? Um, would you find pocket change? Well, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, were there any watches that sold for a hundred grand that are now worth less than 10? You know, are there any that have fallen that hard? Is that a thing? These, you've got, you've got these over here, the Delaney's, right? These. Well, okay, but that doesn't, that's not really what he um, is describing. Um, I think the best example of what you're describing is vintage Panerai. Okay. That's actually what's happened to vintage Panerai in the last five, six years. Uh, there were watches that were coming out in the early 90s called Pre-Vendome, mm -hmm. and these watches were pushing thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, and now they're selling for like ten or $13,000. they have lost okay. 60 70%. Right. There was a lot of collectors pushing that market, and they've kind of all disappeared, and those watches have gone down a lot. Got you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, vintage Panerai. What's this guy you've got out here? All right, so this is a boutique brand called HYT. Uh, this is a very sophisticated watch where actually you- I've never heard of it. You tell the time by looking at the, where the circle is, the green circle. So right now it's, uh, what's that? It's between eight o'clock, so it's almost nine o'clock. So it's, not, it's eight. I'm seeing a red 40. circle. No, no, I'm looking at the green on the side. Look at the green right there. Okay, the so how do you tell the time? You look at where it is, it's between 8 and 9, so it's 8 o'clock, and then you look at the minutes hands to sell, to see it's 8. I'm confused. It's 8.40. Wow. Um, what about all of these What about all the CDs rest of the, in the It's green. all part of the movement, but this isn't going to tell you what time it is. The time is the green line right yeah. there and the minute hand. Okay. So it's 8.40. Is this a power right reserve over here? Yes, it is. Okay. So how much was this? So that watch is 69000 retail, and those were hard to get. The problem is the resale market isn't that strong on them. so. You buy that watch for sixty nine thousand. Maybe you're getting back forty, forty five at the most if you can find a buyer. Really? They're so how much are you selling this for? Forty five. Okay. So my personal opinion, I wouldn't ever buy a no name brand because it is a relatively no name brand for anything like that amount of money. Because for me, I look at the challenge if I ever want to sell it. Right. Right. Um, I could go to a pawn shop and say, you want to buy this? And say, well, I don't know what it is. And they're not watch experts. So I would personally shy away from this, but it's still a good buy for someone if you buy it right, like anything else. Right. What about these? Talk, talk to me about these, these blingy things out mm. here. Uh... So these are what we call piece uniques. That means the factory actually only made one of each of these watches. Okay. They're, they're one of one. So this is a brand named Delano. Can you check it out? It's got humongous Longest retail price. This is a Turbion. Okay. So this costs how much? The retail. The retail. Retail is approximately two hundred on that watch. Two hundred thousand. Should be wearing white gloves. <laughs> so uh, how much is it? It's brand new, right? Right. So this watch, as a brand new watch, you can buy it for sixty percent off to seventy percent off retail price. Really, brand new. Brand new. So what does that say about the used value? So if, if this was used, it'd probably be worth half of what it would cost brand new. So just do the math. It basically. Well, wait, no. If you can buy this for seventy percent off retail, then used it has to be less than oh no, half, half of, of that price. Oh wow! Yeah. Put it on your wrist for two minutes. I'll buy it off you for <laughs> half of the. <laughs> okay. It's a pretty looking. I mean, watch. it's a very sophisticated watch. It's and it's a tourbillon. It's gorgeous. It's a tourbillon. Yeah, something, is a something special. Watch. But this, you get great deals on this type of watch. That's crazy. There's another watch that doesn't hold its value. Hublot. Hublot. Well, actually, I've got two different types of Hublots. So they're both black. Right. And? So this is a King Power Unico. This watch retails for $30,000. It's ceramic? Yes. Okay. So this watch was hot, now it's not. And this watch, you basically buy it at half. This is like a fourteen dollars to $15,000 watch. On the other hand... So, so, so staying on this watch for a second, so if this was fourteen dollars to $15,000, somebody paid that today, what would happen to that in three, four, five years time, do you think? Well, I mean, I can't, I can't say for sure, but still it's probably gonna incrementally go down in value over time, I, I believe so. So not a good investment. No. But it's a nice looking watch. Yeah. I'm not a huge Hublot fan because I think it's trying to look like an AP and it 
doesn't yeah. quite get there, but well, they're a good watch. Does I this, would wear that. Does one. this does this Hublot look familiar? The yeah, shape? yeah, it does. Yeah, you know what it. What do you like. think they're trying to look like? They're trying to look like a Richard Mille. <laughs> we put these side by side. But they fail on every level. Right? So this is a newer Hublot called the Spirit of Big Bang, and these are actually Let doing fairly well. This specific model is the Bruce Lee limited edition. Bruce they, Lee? Yeah, they he's did dead. They, they did very well with this watch. <laughs> well, they didn't have to get a license, did they? Because he's dead. Well, no, they, kidding, they still did. They absolutely did. Yeah. Uh, the packaging is incredible on this watch, and this watch is actually still holding its value. Twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars for this. How much was it? Thirty thousand. Is it used? It is. We call a slider. It's still almost like a brand new watch, but okay. it's technically worn probably a couple of times. So why is this the, at retail price? You know what? I can't explain it, but if you go looking to buy this watch, there's nothing on the market. Interesting. No. Would you recommend anybody to buy a Hublot at retail? You know what? I wouldn't recommend it, but if you fall in love with this watch or you're a big Bruce Lee fan and you decide you want to buy it and you go on the market and you try to find it you can't. and you realize you can't find it anywhere, then yeah, you go ahead and bite the bull and you pay the price. And you yeah, there's the also another element to it as well. When you buy a watch, it's an emotional thing because you want to enjoy it, right? So sometimes the price doesn't even matter. If you like something and you want it, right. you should buy it. Exactly right. You can't always only buy because of resale value. Uh, here's some examples. I just pulled these out. Again, these are watches that you get big discounts on. Roger Dubuis and Zenit. These are classic, classic brands that make high-end watches but do not hold their value after you buy the watch. Okay. These are both selling at literally 50-55% off of retail price. Really? So I was under the impression that Roger Dubuis, their new watches, are holding their value quite well. So, I mean, I disagree. I, I, okay. I, well, you're, you're I, the expert. I haven't seen any Roger Dubuis that hold their value. Really? Actually, no. They all sell at big discounts. Really? And, and talk to me about the Zenith. That's this a pretty looking watch. Do you wear that, right, Adam? This is a Zenith Tourbillon. I do like that, yeah. Retail price is almost $50,000. Which is actually inexpensive for a Tourbillon. It is. It is. And how much are you asking for that? 22000 That's cheap for a Tourbillon. That's very yeah. inexpensive. It's actually a good looking watch. It's a good looking watch. Yeah. Well, he's my ceramic. barometer. Adam is my barometer. Is that a good looking watch? It is. Would you wear it? Yes. <laughs> Would you wear that? Yes. Because it's Bruce Lee and yes. he does Jing Jang Joe? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, here's it. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Jing Jang Jing? Jeet Kune Do. Jing Jeet. 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 J-W-T. Jeet. Kune K-U-N. Kun Do. Jeet Kune Do. See what we're learning today? <laughs> Just call it JKD. 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 Okay. Here's another example of a brand that crashed and burned. These were very hot. Frank Mueller. This wasn't their most popular model, but this is a Frank Mueller. 15 years ago, these were probably worth nine to ten thousand dollars, and now it's basically five thousand, five thousand five hundred. Really? So uh, not a great investment. No. What else do we have here that's uh, interesting? You have a lot of very nice pieces. You know what I still have is the deep I know, from I, last I, time. I know, and I made you an offer on it and you didn't accept it, but I my know. offer is still good. All right. Am I taking it with me today? I think you offered 20000 but I, I can't sell it at that price, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think it was that much. Was it that much? <laughs> so that sounds generous for you. <laughs> it was Mark 30. What will you take for it right this second? 24000 so if I come back in another four weeks, six <laughs> weeks, it'll be eighteen thousand. Is that is that a man's watch? Yeah, it's huge. I call it unisex. And it's heavy. Feel the weight of this, Adam. Jeepers, that is. I don't think a woman would have. Well, some women have the strength to carry, but that's a heavy watch. They do, yeah. Look, it's big. Yeah, it's just very girly. It won't go over my wrist. <laughs> okay, so there we go. You know, there's actually some good opportunities right now with Paddock. Now, I told you that the Nautiluses and the Aquanauts were the hot ticket, and they are. They're selling for a lot of money. But what has gone down in price in the last two, three years are some of the more dressy watches. He didn't see that. He didn't. could have got away with it. Would you have missed that if it had taken it? <laughs> the silence says everything. See, see his face? Yeah. He's a, your face was the same as his face in the airplane. <laughs> Guys. You got to check out the airplane video because it's the funniest thing. You want to see Adam scared? It, it was terrified. Out, terrified. Terrified. Hilarious stuff. Watch the airplane video. I think it was put out like three days ago. 
or a week ago or two uh, yeah, weeks not ago. This one out. Yeah, so two weeks ago. Whatever. But airplane, watch it. So this is a 5036. So I'd say like uh, six to eight years ago, these were trading 35, 37,000. Okay. Now they're 27,000. They've gone down 10,000. Okay. This is the time to buy watches like this when they're not necessarily. So you think it'll go up? Yes, I do. I think this is a good investment. It's tiny. It's a small watch, right? Well, it's a 36 but, millimeter watch. But are smaller watches not going out of fashion? Well, this is what everyone's been talking about. The fact that they've been making watches that are this big for so long, and this was what was everybody wanted. But, but now, that's huge. But now these are slowing down. These aren't selling nearly that's, as fast. That's as my size watch. But this is this is huge. Look. <laughs> yeah. That is, what size is this? Forty-eight millimeters. Yeah. Correct. It's forty-eight millimeters. Yeah. Yeah. It's an ugly-looking watch, but <laughs> horrible. I like the size. It's horrible. However, I did notice. I couldn't help but notice. You have this guy here. That's nice. Now you see, I have one of those in rose gold. You've seen it. Oh, have you? Yes, exactly what is the it? same watch. It's the AP Turbion. Offshore Turbion. Offshore Turbion, yeah. Oops. Here. No, I wanted to oh. compare it. Nice watch, right? Yeah. So this one you're asking how much? 135. So that is a massive saving on a new one because a new one of these in, in to change is like two, 200, 260 or 270. Yeah, as you say, quarter yeah, of a million. It's about, it's about half. So that would not have been a good investment. The one that I bought in gold, I think was 300 and something thousand list, and I paid like maybe 130 for it, 140. So not a good investment. But if you buy it right, if you buy it at this price, it's a great investment. Right. It won't go down anymore. Yeah, this is definitely an example of a watch that you don't want to go buy brand new. You want no. to buy a nice, perfect condition, pre-owned piece. Correct. Like, like this one that you have in your store. Like this one that I have right here at EssentialWatches.com. <laughs> Plug yourself. <laughs> well, cool. Is there anything else to show us or is that, uh, is that everything? Actually, I do have two watches I want to show you before you leave. He has more hidden away in the back. So this is my opportunity. <laughs> These watches are actually... Sorry, I was stealing the... the <laughs> oh, uh, there we go. Yeah. These watches are actually going on an airplane later today to Asia. Oh, Her nice. Harry Opus. Winston Opuses. These are beautiful. Now, these were ridiculously expensive when they came yeah. out, right? This one was 300000 and this was 260000 And today? Well, even as a pre-owned watch, these are worth about... 60% of retail is what they're still trading at. So the problem it is wouldn't you, have been a good investment if you would bought it in the Right. Year. And the problem was you couldn't get these for retail price. I mean, uh, sorry, you couldn't get these with a discount off of retail. You had to basically buy them for retail. From the boutique, yeah. right? Like I know this gentleman bought this watch, I believe in Harrods in London. And paid a fortune. $300,000. Oh, so he's not happy selling it for that, right? But again, when you buy something like this, especially if you go and buy it at a, a major retailer, it's not something you would ever want to sell. You need to keep it. Right. You need, right. To, you need to love what you're buying. You, you really do. You yeah. can't have any buyer's remorse when you're buying watches like this. Well, thank you very much for showing us and thank you for the education that you gave us today. I think this would be very informative. Good knowledge. I mean, it's always good to know. So the moral of the story is buy used, right? Definitely buy pre-owned. It's the way to go. Yeah. Gently careful. Gently previously cared for, or not. Previously enjoyed. Yeah, previously enjoyed, there you go, previously <laughs> enjoyed. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. In it to win it, hit that bell, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you soon.